Well, you know, this is a great win for our team. Uh, really proud of our players and our coaches. I think everybody really stepped up and, you know, did a, a really, really good job today. Uh, I think the energy was good. Um, you know, the offense made a lot of explosive plays out there. Um, you know, defense really played well. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a great team win. I can't really ex explain it. I mean, this is an unusual circumstance for me to be in, to be watching from afar, uh, to see our team play from afar, win uh, the game. Uh, they were excited after the game. Um, they were very happy, you know, that um, they could go out there and do a great job in this game, uh, playing at home. Uh, last home game for a lot of the seniors. Uh, I'm sure the players wanted to do a good job for them. And I'm really happy for our seniors and the great contribution that they've made, um, you know, in their career here. Uh, and it's great for them to win the last game in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Uh, I think our coaching staff did a marvelous job today. Um, you know, they played the situations. We had a good plan. Uh, they stayed with the plan. They executed the plan. Um, you know, Sark did a nice job of managing things. Um, and, you know, I sat here and felt a little helpless uh, that I could see things and, you know, yell at things and listen to Miss Terry cheer downstairs. Um, it's a little different, but um, still feels good to win. So I'm happy for our fans. Uh, who support us. Uh, I know this is a big game for a lot of the people who support us. And um, it's, an, it's just a great win for us. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of things that we could learn from this game, uh, lessons that uh, we'll learn and grow from and get better. Uh, that's something that you always want to focus on this time of year, uh, that your team continues to improve and get better because, you know, each game you play is a little more on the line. Uh, so it's really important that you can execute um, – and play with consistency. And that's something that we'll have to strive for, you know, in these next games that we have coming up here. Okay, guys, like I said, if you want to ask questions, please use the raise your hand function. We will start with Michael Casagrande. Yeah, Nick, just wondering how many of those true in-game decisions did Steve have to make in his new role today? I, I didn't think there was a lot. I didn't think there was a lot of those, you know, real tough situations that came up, you know, a couple times that, you know, we made it on third down that we could have might have gone for it on fourth down. And uh, but those those decisions really didn't really come up. Um, but I thought he was well prepared for, you know, what he needed to do. And, um, you know, I, I, I think he did a really good job. OK, we'll go to Brett Hudson with the Tuscaloosa News. Yeah, Coach, how have you seen your pass rush grow and develop over the last few weeks to get to the point where they can affect Bo Nix like this? Well, I, I think that our entire defense has kind of, you know, improved and gelled, you know, together as a unit. All 11 guys playing better. I think we play a little better in the back end than what we were playing in the beginning. I think we've got a little better pass rush. Uh, I think we're using more players, you know, now, uh, which I think, you know, enhances uh, everybody's opportunities to have a role and uh, be able to go out there and contribute. So, um you know, we made a couple of mistakes in the secondary that could have been really costly. You know, the guy drops the ball when he's 20 yards behind everybody, you know, in the second quarter, uh, which was a bust on defense. And, you know, there's a couple others on third down that we needed to get off the field on and didn't uh, because of a couple mental errors. But, you know, Auburn does a really, really good job offensively. They, they use a lot of formations, a lot of motions. You really have to be on your toes in terms of how you adjust and, um, Sometimes, for the most part, we did a really good job, but we made a couple errors that, you know, helped them make some plays, especially on third down. We'll go to Chris Walsh. Which was tougher for you today, not being on the headset or not being there for the, the pregame ceremony with the seniors and their families? Well, I think, you know, that's a tough one. I think both are um, equally difficult to deal with when you're a coach and you have so much respect and admiration for – this senior class and all that they've accomplished and all that they've done. But, you know, this is one of the best classes of people I think that, you know, we've ever had uh, great leadership, uh, really good character. Um, they, they've inspired and impacted a lot of other guys on our team in a really positive way. Um, I think they're all going to graduate. Uh, so we're really proud of them for that. And um, 
I'm sure they're going to go on and be great ambassadors for the University of Alabama as well and have success in life because of who they are. And hopefully some of the lessons that they learned while they were here is going to or will help them be more successful in life. But uh, that was difficult. Um, and then, you know, not being there for the game. Uh, the Iron Bowl was such a great competitive venue uh, that means so much to so many people. Um, and it was really hard, especially the fact that I feel great. Um, and, um, but, you know, I did what I could do uh, to help prepare the team throughout the week. I uh, was involved in everything that we could do, you know, right up till 90 minutes before the game. And, you know, then we just had to sit and watch from afar. So, um, but I, I think, you know, the training and the discipline that you develop in people, um, you know, carries over whether you're there with them or not. I mean, no different than your kids. You know, if you train your kids well and they make really good choices and decisions, you can trust them to go out and do it even when you're not around. So uh, I think that speaks volumes for the character on our team uh, and the leadership that we have um, that helps inspire everybody on the team to uh, play with that kind of competitive character. We'll go with Aaron Settles. Nick, certainly yeah. Alakai Moore is not a finished product yet, but in terms of when sort of the light went on from him, when did you see that? Because he's been playing with a lot of confidence lately. Yeah, well, I think that early in the season, uh, we saw a lot of stuff. Missouri, Ole Miss, you know, those games were really tough for the defensive players, especially the young ones. They saw about everything that, you know, you could see from a formation and adjustment uh, standpoint, but I think they learned a lot from it. And uh, I think Malachi is the kind of guy that, you know, he might make a mistake once, but when he learns, he's smart, he's, he gets it right the next time. So the cumulative effect of those experiences, I think, has made him a lot more confident. Uh, and uh, he's played really, really well for us. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that he'll continue to improve, uh, but we're certainly pleased with the progress that he's made to this point. We'll go with Cecil Hurt. Coach, obviously you had done some LSU prep earlier, but it's a quick turnaround for, I guess, a different or at least a opponent you didn't know you were playing until Friday. Um, will it be a, a tough week of preparation because of that? No, I really don't think so because we actually practiced for them three days, uh, one day in the bye week, uh, and then on Monday and Tuesday when we thought we were going to play uh, and the game got canceled. So – we actually had three days of work with them. Uh, not that, that you know, players are going to immediately sort of recall all that stuff. But because we've had some experience with that, I think that'll be beneficial in, you know, to how we put the plan together. I think it's important this time of year. Uh, look, this would normally have been the 12th game of the season. Uh, and we're still going to have two games left. And if we're fortunate enough to have success in those games, a third game in the SEC championship and maybe more uh, after that. So uh, I think, you know, we really got to try to take care of our team a little bit in terms of how we practice and how they recover uh, and how we move forward with our team. So uh, this is going to be a big game for us at LSU. It always is. They, they have a lot of really good players. I don't care what their record is. Uh, they have a lot of talented guys. We thought that, you know, when we, when we were preparing for them before. So, um, we'll, we'll, you know, I, I don't feel like this is going to be an abnormal week for us. Okay, we'll finish up with Joseph Goodman from AL.com. Hey, Nick. Um, two questions. First, uh, what were the circumstances when you were yelling at the TV? Uh, when did you see me yell at the TV? Oh, at the beginning in your opening statement, you mentioned yelling. I think I did yell at the TV a couple times today. A um, couple times when we made some mistakes in coverage. A uh, couple times when we missed some tackles. A um, couple times when Mac didn't throw the ball to the guy I thought he should have thrown it to. <laughs> I, still, I guess it was more than a couple. Um, but I would like to ask you a question because I don't know where you got your get up there, but I sure would like to get one like that. All that matching mask and Yellow and gold, it looks good, man. It look, really looks classy. I like that look. Well, there's a, uh, there's a back, back story to that. Maybe we can talk about it. Speaking of backstories, could you fill me in on the elephant head behind you? What's the story there? 
Uh, you have to talk to Miss Terry about that. She's a decorator in the house. And uh, this is this, I'm actually in what we call our recruiting room. Uh, so this is the room that we actually added on to the house when we came here so that when we had recruits and their parents that uh, we would have a room large enough that we could have 60, 70 people and, um, you know, have breakfast and, um, you know, a little line dancing at night, a little shoot pool, a little, you know, play cards, uh, develop relationships. So uh, if you could see the whole room, there's quite a bit of Alabama paraphernalia around and lots of pictures that represent, you know, a lot of positive things that have happened here, whether they're trips to the White House or um, receiving national championship trophies. And uh, I guess that elephant's just a symbol of who we are at Alabama.